everybody, it's Christy Chandler coming to you live from home once again. Update on the uh, donations. Apparently uh, there was a temporary block on the uh, my PayPal account, but I have soon resolved. I have resolved that, cleared that up, so everybody can donate once again safely and well. So please get to that right away if you haven't been able to do that the past day or two. Also, if you do find difficulty in donating through PayPal, Mm, I will allow for you to send me a, a certified bank check through the U.S. mail to my home address. But mostly, I want it direct to my PayPal account, please. Anyway, with that, um, still got the uh, buzz about from the electric company threatening to cut off our power, so we desperately need at least $200. I say that, I, I state that, I quote that amount because not only do we need to pay the bill, but we're going to need to be able to eat around here and food's not going to be around totally for that long, for uh, shoot, another couple of weeks. Uh, well, anyway, aside from that, um, yes, please help us. We don't want to lose our electricity or go hungry, please. Donate now. Okay, anyway, so with that, we, re we start reading the next chapter of Unicorns, Rainbows, and Bluebirds of Happiness. Chapter 2, Karaoke Night. Uncle! So bring that the blue pigeon screeched tunelessly into the microphone as she read the words on the screen at the bar. Only five creatures were in the bar at the moment. One of them was an employee who served the customers drinks. Two of them appeared to be ordinary humans who were having a conversation with each other. The other inhabitant of the bar was an orange and white hamster who was trying to best distract herself from the pigeon singing. Hmm. I don't know, it might be... Uh, what was her name? Edith? Uh, anyway, moving on. Alright, so, let's see, can I make it? Your girlfriend has a terrible singing voice, but at least she's having fun! Like the police officer said to the man who was currently wearing the blue tuxedo with a pair of pink jeans. Mike was currently wearing a plain white t-shirt with a black leather coat. And a pair of blue jeans. The man wearing the blue tuxedo shrugged his shoulders. Hmm. Hmm. She gets so excited for karaoke, she's always asking me to buy her something so that she can sing karaoke at home. That's not going to happen anytime soon, so I just let her sing here every week. Monko, Monko, Monko. Bartender wearing a black dress that matched her black hair. Said, oh, I wish you wouldn't sometimes. As she poured glasses of rum and coke are the two men. Wait. I don't want Miss Red. Uh, I wish that you wouldn't sometimes, as she, she said as she poured glasses of rum and coke for the two men. Kevin smiled as he accepted his glass, while Mike planned on waiting until he finished his current glass of rum and coca-cola. It's not rum and coke, it's coca-cola from the Romans. Rum and coca-cola, drink it from the umpty gala. Yeah, before he drank, yeah, finish his current drink, his glass, before he drank a second one. Ah, so you're familiar with the mutations, right? Mike asked Kevin, who smirked as he quickly drank all the liquid in his glass. Uh, which one? The one that transforms people into giants? The one that gives them magic powers? The one that makes them fly? Eh, or the ones that makes animals talk? Kevin asked Mike, who stared at Kevin as he took a sip from his glass. I can't tell you're not taking this seriously, Kev said, Ke said Mike said to Kevin, who, who continued to smirk as the employee poured him another drink. As you know, mutations have existed for almost 600 years. We don't know what caused them, and we likely never will. However, within the past 200 years, a strange combination of the two different mutations has appeared. Kevin nodded his head as Mike paused to take a sip of his drink. 
Yes. Some people have the horn on their forehead that gives them magical powers as well as the wings that let them fly. As the bartender finished pouring him another drink, Kevin asked, Sauron! Sabrina continued to shriek tunelessly through the speakers in the bar. Mongo! 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 Mm. For some reason, the mutation makes the wings larger and the magic stronger. A fully grown magic user. I think most people call them unicorns, Kevin said with a childish smile which caused Mike to sigh. Ugh. A fully grown unicorn who spent their life studying and practicing magic can be can just barely reach the level of power that a baby with a mutation can harness a fully grown person with wings. Kevin interrupted Mike a second time. You mean a Pegasus? The police officer groaned in annoyance. Ugh. Folly Pong Craigus Pegasus can barely fly at a third of the speed that a child with a mutation can. They're dangerous, but they're also very useful to us. The main problem that we have is that they can't increase their numbers, Mike said to Kevin, who chuckled as he started to sip the liquid from his glass. Oh, I heard about that. When one of them is pregnant, the child ends up with the same mutation. The child sucks the life out of the mother while... It's in this. It's in the womb. Then the child's born and the mother dies. What we're left with is a species that can reproduce, but their population either stays the same or decreases. Hmm. Perhaps it's for the best, given how dangerous and unstable they are. <sighs> Kevin shuddered as he thought of his time at Saint in Saint Anger's mental hospital, where he shared a room with a mutated person named Francine. Ah, most of them end up in mental institutions because their mutations drive them insane. Only a few of them are able to function on the normal level. Mike said as a smile started to appear on his face. But imagine if there was a person with the mutation who wasn't completely crazy, who could potentially reproduce exponentially. Mike said to the man who looked at him with a curious expression before he took a nice sip from his glass. Kevin said simply, simply, The girl and her twin sister. And Mike nodded his head. Hmm. Her mother's pregnancy was the first case of a pregnant, muted, conceiving twins. It was the first time that the population had increased since around 100 years ago. But that's the that's not the most interesting part. Mike started to grin. Kevin's curiosity increased as the man reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of photographs they placed on the counter at the bar. Mike pointed at what to appear to be a blurry photo of the insides of a young woman's womb. Ugh. We've had our best unicorns watching these two for years. Imagine our surprise when we found one of them was pregnant with twins. Kevin stared at the photos. The girls healed each other when they slept together. They provided the life and magic needed for their offspring to grow inside of her. They were producing mutated children. And a mother didn't need to die when she gave birth. There was so much potential. And now... Mike paused and Kevin stared at him intensely. Now she's dead and her children are dead. What does this have to do with me? Kevin asked. And Mike shrugged his shoulders. Eh. Everything. You see, we've already found one of the babies in your house. And your friend Jack will die in about an hour when my friend pulls him over and find the other baby in the trunk of his car. Also, those pink patties that you gave Edith to wash, I was right, her name was Edith, are covered with the blood of the girl that you murdered, as well as your fingerprints. Arr, 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 Mike laughed at the end of his sentence as Kevin reached out and grabbed him by the throat, choking him as he held him up in the air. Kevin screamed, you son of a bitch! The rest of the people in the bar turned their heads... Turned their heads to stare at the sea between the two men. Uh, the best thing to do right now is to turn yourself in. If you take one step out of the bar without me, you'll die. If you kill me, then you'll die. Mike explained to the man. Kevin grounded the officer before he slammed Mike's face into the counter of the bar. Where his strength, his drink sat. The glass shared once his face was slammed onto it, and Mike yelled in pain as 
Kevin slammed his head repeatedly onto the counter. After a few hard hits, the man's body became limp. <laughs> Kevin walked away from the dead man's corpse and started to brush away any of the man's blood that remained on his clothes. It didn't work very well, and it might have caused the blood to spread throughout his clothing. Hmm. We need to leave right now, Kevin said to his girlfriend and the hamster who cleaned his clothes. Mango! The pigeon nest as she flew onto the man's shoulder. He was bluffing. He's working outside of the law right now. Checked circuit that he planned he planted the evidence at our house in Jack's car. And he's probably said some kind of anonymous tip to the police. They'll find it. Then they'll try to kill us. We're safe now, but we won't be soon. Kevin said as he pulled his cellular phone out of his pocket. Hey, Mr. Jack. Where are you at? Kevin typed the message and sent it out to his friend as he opened the door and walked out of the bar with Sabrina on his shoulder and Edith clinging into the, onto the leg of his pants. I'm on the side of the freeway in my car. Big fucker poked me over. He's looking in my trunk right now. Kevin read the message as he opened the door of his car. Edith and Sabrina either walked or flew into the seats of the back seat of the car while Kevin sat in the driver's seat and started the engine. He's asking me to put my hands up and get out of the car. Once the engine started, Kevin locked up, looked down on his phone and swore. Quack. He turned to Edith as his car started to move. I'm sorry, but your boyfriend's dead, Kevin said sympathetically as Edith started to sob. A tear started to run down Kevin's face as he heard the police sirens in the night air as he drove his car. He heard the faint sound of somebody screaming expletives, which were followed by a few loud gunshots that disturbed the peaceful atmosphere of the night. It's a shame that he didn't wait to die until 7 in the morning, Kevin said quietly as he drove. Edith continued to sob and Sabrina remained quiet in her seat. Stop the car! The man who continued to drive heard a feminine voice. He looked into his rearview mirror as he drove and was surprised to see to see what happened. What appeared to be a girl with wings and a white horn on her forehead. Stop the car! Her pink hair waving in the wind as she flew had him mesmerized. He was so focused on the guard that he didn't notice the ball of magic that was currently traveling toward his car. Mungo! The blue pigeon shrieked as the ball of magic hit the car, destroying the tires. The man crushed, cursed as he opened the door to the left of him in the car and licked out. Sabrina grabbed Edith and flew out of the open door before the car crashed into a tree on the side of the road. You killed my sister! The girl yelled as she charged towards the man, who smiled as he reached into his left pocket and pulled out a small pistol. Don't come any closer, Kevin said with a smile as he pointed the gun at the girl, who continued to charge towards him. Before the man had time to pull the trigger, the angry girl had lifted him in the air and had her horn positioned near his neck. I didn't kill your sister, Kevin said simply. The girl stared at him with with eyes and an expression that showcased how angry she was with the man. Officer Mike said that you did. Officer Mike is a liar, so Kevin said calmly as the girl continued to stare at him as she held him above her head. Do you know who killed her? The girl asked Kevin, who shook his head in response. As soon as the man had finished shaking his head, the girl released him from her grip and impaled him on her horn. Sabrina shrieked while Edith watched the man slide off the girl's horn with a shocked expression on her face. I didn't kill your sister, the man said weakly to the girl, who continued to stare at him as the blue pigeon flew on top of his stomach. The pigeon looked down on the dying man with a mournful expression on her face as tears started to slide down her face. Don't cry. I've lived long enough. Lived long enough. And don't be angry at her. I would have done the same thing, Kevin said calmly as his breathing became shallower. I love you, 
Kevin said before his body became limp on the darkened street underneath the night sky. The vision turned her gaze from the dead man to the girl, who appeared to be regretting her decision to murder men. I'm sorry. I know how you feel, the girl said simply before she flew off into the night. Hmm. Well, I guess he's dead. Oh well. Well, I'll read another chapter again in the near future. In the meantime, please donate via PayPal. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good day.